Now I would like to mention uh, Bon John's uh, relationship to blood. Scary topic, but we who had been his uh, victims, we had realized, we had to realize that the legend <laughs> which we were fed with, that Rambadur Bonjon is kind of uh, allergic to blood or meat, is false, it's a lie. Uh, because when the vegan Bretarian, not even vegan Bretarian, and his followers are vegans, and when they trash you to blood, then you start to think, but wait a minute, was he not teaching everyone that uh, meat and blood are kind of uh, defilements that blood which is pouring out from sacrificed animals or just animals killed for food and uh, the meat that all this is uh, the food of demons and then you are there in front of him and his followers the Polish Tomek Tarnowski Dorje, the Nepali Kempo, Dawa Shangbo, uh, Buddha Lama, Darshan Subalimbu, Molam Lama, who disappeared later. And they are trashing you into blood. They are breaking your bones. But now I am speaking about the blood. He trashed me here and blood came out from this and it was drank out by the Halkorias soil, Halkorias earth, and uh, very strange, uh, when he was torturing me, beating me, breaking my hands, but as soon as my blood poured out, it was, it was I think there is some, uh, some veins, because he cut some of the veins, because there was a lot of blood, uh, coming out from my head it was at night midnight and he kept some women tamang women in the kitchen for waiting since he planned everything in two minutes uh, for waiting for me they were uh, like uh, six or ten even tamang women they they witnessed how he was beating me to blood and it's just normal to them and I remember one of them, uh, the, I, the, I don't remember exactly if there were nuns, uh, but I rather think that there were just civilian women. And one of the women was Usha Didi, Bom John's uh, girlfriend's, long-time girlfriend's uh, aunt from Darjeeling, Mirik. So I know Usha Didi because she used to be in Hal Korea in 2011 when I stayed in Hal Korea as Bom John's supporter still. And this Usha Didi was, uh, Bon John told her to clean the wound with hot water. So they were already cooking that water there. It was uh, like, uh, it's like, uh, it's like very absurd, very, it's a psychopathic uh, guru who is planning the beating into the, elaborating into small details. And I remember that when I was already sleeping in the in the jungle on the chains and half climbed inside the, near the door of my tent because I couldn't go thanks to the short chains I couldn't go inside. And then they come rush a group of Bomjo's followers, the ones two of them were my per my regular torturers, and they rush at the midnight and wake me up and uh, without communicating with me and uh, unchain me but i felt that it, this unchaining at midnight was uh, weird it was probably not that they realized that they should uh, release me and uh, 
They were telling each other quickly, quickly, because uh, we don't have time, Guruji will be angry or something like that. But I didn't understand, but I was like a piece of, you know, uh, ruin. I didn't have any power to, even to <laughs> defend myself, how could I in that condition? I lost maybe 20 kilos, I don't know. Uh, but even mentally, I just became apathic because they were telling every day that I, they are going to kill me. So and they didn't tell me and they brought me to the platform, the public part platform uh, where Bomjo was sitting on the plastic chair and around him, around him these people. Uh, two of them holding a fire torch, real fire torch, <laughs> so that I had the feeling that I'm in hell. Bom John was um, creating such a, like a atmosphere, and that he's like the god of the hell or something, and he had a huge bamboo stick and uh, he was beating me. My body was still chained and. I couldn't straight myself up and anyway the chain on my neck was in the hand of Rambon, uh, Darshan and uh, I'm describing the details in other places but I just wanted to focus in this video on the fact that he needed my blood for some reason because he was thrashing me and everything, but he suddenly stopped when the blood mm, just like poof, exploded from my head. And he... Uh, I, I cannot forget that satisfaction in him. I cannot forget that moment when uh, he suddenly told, okay, like the job was done or something like that. But he, he, I don't have any definition yet for he needs that blood to be drawn from you in a condition of, ter of terror and uh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this beating ended. He sent me to the kitchen, sent me, he let me brought there because I couldn't walk in all these chains. And uh, they very roughly put this uh, dirty cloth with hot water on my wound, like cleaning. Uh, like he was even uh, worried if I get uh, <laughs> infection from the wound. So it is it's really doesn't make sense. Yeah, it would make sense when you are still brainwashed. Uh, what I was. Uh, right after re releasing me and I was trying to understand I even told how Guruji is uh, compassionate that he even <laughs> cleans uh, lets my wound to be cleaned because uh, the Stockholm syndrome is just about this that uh, you are you refuse to see the bad things your torturer and uh, abductor is doing to you and the little good thing which uh, he is doing as reaction on his his bad things. So then you explain it as you you want to see only that good thing. But this is human, yes. And I'm not the only one whose blood he needed. Uh, the, actually, when you learn about uh, his other victims. So let's take the first victim, Anil Khatri, uh, with whom I managed to speak. Not that I was searching for him, it happened. I was in Latampuri and I, I happened to meet him. I didn't know who is, uh, he is that guy first, uh, that guy about whom I, we heard those stories. And then I met him and I spoke with him and he described me uh, the story in a different way than the followers of Bonjon describe it, obviously. But I tend to believe the victim more than uh, the attackers. Uh, so in his case, it was that Bonjon took his sword, he already walked around with the sword that time. Those swords had been bought to him by Jasba Durvaiba in Kathmandu, not bought, they made it specially for him. Not one. 
he has he has more swords like uh, this kind of uh, scimitar kind of swords and he uh, wanted to cut down the head of uh, of the boy and uh, he was 22 years old at that time and uh, because he moved so he didn't cut his head but he cut a big piece of flesh from his shoulder uh, but uh, followers of Bomjoon are telling until today that he cut a piece of meat from his head. Uh, I don't know why there are two versions, but I'm just telling it to you so that you have both versions. I have no way to check it out why there are these two versions. What is the difference? Okay, there is a big difference to cut someone's head and cut someone's shoulder. But uh, there was blood in any case. And again, the followers' description, though uh, Anil Katri, I think, didn't tell me this, but the followers are telling the Lamas that Bomjon uh, ordered the wounded boy uh, again. He was out of his trance, uh, he's seeing the blood, he was kind of satisfied, and he ordered his followers to bring him to the there was a spring, drinking water spring, with a little like river, no river, mm, like a, no, I don't know in the English word, so a small water source of drinking water, and uh, they brought it him to clean his wound, and they used some uh, herbs to put it on the wound, here or on the shoulder, I don't know. This is the version of the followers. Uh, the version from Anil Katri himself is that Bonjon ordered his brother who was present, that's also interesting, Dil Bahadur, one of his older brothers, uh, to immediately put him on a motorbike and bring him to hospital. So, again, blood. Let's not go into details. Uh, as soon as he saw the blood of Anil Katri, he was satisfied. Then we have the next story of the beating, I don't know what happened with the Spanish woman, that was right after Anil Katri, he told me. Uh, but she was released in a terrible condition, emaciated and tortured, and her skin was scaling down. This is Andrea Good's version in her book, a Reflection on Paul and Dorje. And I go, don't go into that detail because I don't know much about her injuries. But then we have the 17 Marishi people whom Bomjon and his followers and monks uh, abducted uh, and uh, they ordered them to go inside the, the hut, the house which was in the jungle. They locked them up and um, all the followers and all the monks and Bomjon himself, they were trashing them all night. And because they were followers, so they didn't defend themselves, they say. And uh, I remember seeing the photos. Now is I, it's difficult to find those photos now, but uh, there are photos archived in the Nepali media where the men are. They went to police the next day, and they are showing their uh, uh, backs, and there were bloody lines of cut, uh, brutal bit, brutal beating into blood. Some of them had been thrashed on their heads into blood. So again, uh, Bonjo needed blood. Hmm. And there are the nine sheep herds, which is the story also coming after the 17 muddy sheep people's attack. Nine sheep herds, again, same story, abducted by Bonjo and his followers, again locked up, thrashed uh, to blood. There were women among them as well. They again, they made police report. Uh, it didn't help because the police was bribed by Bonjon, Bonjon's man. Again, you have this blood when Bonjon is happy, when blood is coming out from people. And then um, the most obvious is what is filmed. Uh, I will put it into this video if I manage. Uh, it's the attack on the five villagers. Uh, again, abducted five villagers who used to be Bomjon's followers uh, because they have the talisman on their necks. Three of them managed to escape, two of them not, two of them stay in the house. The three are running at night through the jungle, 
some like 